Uber is trying to make a good on a promise they made in 2020 by becoming a fully electric vehicle platform. The company is partnering with an EV startup Arrival to create a new EV explicitly designed for Uber drivers. Uber plans to go EV only in London by 2025. This is Arrival's first campaign into electric car development since the company normally focuses on commercial vehicles. Uber launched an $800 million initiative to get more Uber drivers and EVs. Cities and countries are already setting goals to start banning gas cars in the coming years, which will push the existing fleets to switch to electric mobility. Uber is also asking its drivers to contribute to the design process to make the car comfortable for the driver while enhancing the experience for the passengers. Having a purpose-built Uber vehicle has its pros and cons, and we will be exploring these as well in the today's episode. But first, let's get plugged in. Hi, welcome to EV Source. My name is Harry and I'm your host for today's dose of EVs and technology. Before we get started, I'd like to mention a limited time offer to get two free stocks. Yes, free stocks. You'll get one free stock valued up to $250 when you open a new account with Webull. And when you invest at least $100, you'll get another free stock valued up to $1,600. Get them while you can, unless you don't like free stuff. This will also help support the channel while you enjoy your free stocks. The link is in the description description below. Now let's get right into it. The EV startup Arrival is aiming to start producing cars by 2023. This would make it the company's first car and it will be designed by Uber together with the help of its drivers. The car will be developed specifically for use by ride hailing drivers, adding to buses that are due to be on UK roads this year along with delivery vans built for UPS. The company hasn't released any designs as of yet, but they have released a handful of 3D images of the interior to paint an idea of how it could look like. It aims to be more comfortable for drivers who spend hours a day at the wheel. The interior would likely be where most of the attention will go into, utilizing hard surfaces and easy to clean materials comfortable seats, a glass roof, and overall a pleasant environment to make driving for a living more enjoyable. And since passengers usually sit on the back seat, the front passenger seat could be folded away for extra space or just for lifting your legs up for a more relaxed experience. Arrival's Senior Vice President for Mobility, Tom Elvidge, said it would be quote, fundamentally something that's built and designed from the ground up, with ride hailing in mind. There's quite a lot that we think we can improve on and elevate the experience when we take a blank piece of paper. Typically, a ride-hailing vehicle will travel on average 30,000 miles or about 50,000 kilometers a year, so the car must be as comfortable and functional as possible. Today, Uber drivers are using consumer vehicles and driving them several times further than an average person. Ride-hailing demands a lot from the vehicle, so it would make sense to have an affordable, durable, and desirable car designed around driver's needs. Uber Green, which was launched last year, gives passengers the option to choose a hybrid or electric vehicle. This is part of Uber's commitment to providing more than $800 million in resources to help hundreds of drivers across the US, Canada, and Europe transition to electric vehicles. This, together with the partnership with Arrival, will enable Uber to become a fully electric platform by 2040. Uber also hopes to double its EV drivers by the end of 2021 by offering incentives. Arrival's design will likely be one of those recommended while consumers continue to place more value on sustainability. Countries like the UK promote their zero emission commitments initiatives like Uber's Clean Air Act, which was launched in London two years ago. The Clean Air Act introduced additional surcharges for passengers to help its drivers switch over to electric vehicles in the coming years. In some cities, choosing an EV comes with no additional cost. To incentivize customers to take a greener ride, customers will receive three times as many Uber rewards points for every trip taken to unlock rewards toward rides on Uber and orders on Uber Eats. So far, the company has raised over 135 million pounds or approximately $185 million to support the endeavor. It will encourage drivers to apply for financial assistance to upgrade their vehicles, resulting in an entirely electric fleet in London by 2025. Uber also plans to electrify its fleet across the rest of the UK, Europe and the US by 2030 and the rest of the world by 2040. 
Arrival's microfactories will use decentralized production in cities worldwide to produce vehicles close to where they are needed using local workers. This approach requires only a $45 million investment to open a factory, for instance, in a warehouse that can quickly be converted into a fully functional and highly automated factory. The company uses robots to do most labor-intensive work and produces its own parts using composite materials that can be recycled and reused for replacement parts. It also makes its own battery packs and battery control units. The partnership with Uber is another vote of confidence in Arrival, which became a publicly traded company in March after meeting with a special purpose acquisition company or SPAC. The company was launched in 2015 and created working prototypes that are now close to production later this year. The microfactory approach is something we haven't seen from other automakers yet, which really differentiates the company from the rest. I've covered Arrival and their microfactories in earlier videos. If you're interested in learning more about the company, I highly recommend watching them after this. Having a purpose-built vehicle just for ride-hailing has its benefits. The vehicle can be fully customized to address the daily needs of the drivers and passengers. The same approach was taken with Arrival's other commercial vehicles. An approach like this can be great on many levels. It can lower the cost of the vehicle when everything is made for the client's needs from the ground up right from the factory. Instead of having third-party companies installing additional equipment and making changes to the car adding more cost to the vehicle. According to Arrival, the cost is similar to an equivalent gasoline counterpart without any added features for a client's specific needs. Uber will likely incentivize drivers to switch to an Arrival car, making it more affordable to get an EV. And with lower operating costs, it will definitely be a cheaper option over the vehicle's lifetime. Uber could also potentially track the vehicle's battery status and remaining range to offer a car best suited for the passenger's trip, depending on the distance. And because ride-hailing drivers are generally classed as independent contractors, theoretically anyone would be able to buy the Arrival car. According to Tom Elvich, quote, Arrival certainly wouldn't prevent consumers from buying it. Given the usage, it's possible the car would be more of a dual-purpose vehicle, also suitable as a family car as long as it's relatively inexpensive. The downside of a purpose-built car is that it will look the same across the entire fleet. Today, Uber drivers drive a large variety of vehicles, making each ride a new experience. You can even see all kinds of customizations to Uber vehicles, both on the exterior and interior. While many drivers would customize the arrival vehicle as well, fundamentally the car will remain the same. This is both good and bad. It's good because it offers a sense of familiarity for the passengers, making Uber vehicles more distinguishable from the rest. But it could also be bad because it can get repetitive and even boring very fast, just like most taxis are today. However, I think interior design will play a key role in this. So if you're an Uber driver, consider taking Uber's invite to help them design the car to be best suited for every driver's needs. Another downside is that one size does not fit all. Today, Uber offers passengers the option to choose the size of the vehicle to best suit their needs. But this of course could change in the future if the company decides to design a variety of vehicles to fill in the gaps. Now, when we look at the direction we are headed with self-driving cars, it's uncertain how the company will adjust to autonomous ride-hailing cars such as Tesla's robotaxis once they become available. Self-driving cars could one day flip today's ride-hailing service on its head with lower rates and lower operating costs. Uber was working toward having its own self-driving cars for five years, but they sold that business to Aurora with a 26% stake in the company. Uber might deploy self-driving vehicles in partnership with Aurora on the Uber app. Uber founder Travis Kalanick shared his thoughts about self-driving cars in a 2014 interview at the Code Conference. If I were talking to you know, one of the drivers we partner with, what would I say? I'd say, look, this is the way the world's going to go, and if Uber doesn't go there, it's not going to exist either way. So, you know, that's the world, and the world isn't always great. Like, sometimes you get in an accident, and you didn't cause it. but. Um, that's just the way of the world, it's the way of technology and progress. And unfortunately, uh, we all have to find ways to change with the world. While the technology for self-driving cars is still years away and with regulatory approvals that will likely slow down the adoption of self-driving cars, Uber might still have time to figure out how it's going to compete in that market. 
And as Tesla gets closer to full self-driving, with Elon Musk stating that he is confident they will have it by the end of this year, companies like Uber and Lyft might be up for a big surprise which will force them to quickly change their business model or go out of business. But of course, as we've learned from the past, we should always take Elon's statements with a grain of salt, especially when it comes to timelines. So it doesn't look like Uber is going out of business anytime soon, but as technology progresses, things can change really fast. For now, the company is moving ahead with Arrival for a purpose-built ride-hailing electric vehicle. And with Arrival headquarters in London, the UK makes sense as a starting point. A US rollout would make sense as well as Arrival has already set up shop on the East Coast. The company will likely expand and build micro factories in other parts of the world. So expect to see Uber Arrival cars in the UK and the US in 2023 and beyond. What are your thoughts on this partnership and what do you think about the initial designs? How would Uber adjust to autonomous ride hailing cars once they become a reality? You can let me know in the comments below. And before you go, don't forget to get your two free stocks valued up to $1,850 from Webull. Thank you for watching EV Source. Keep charging ahead and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe and take care.